a scene. As you can see in this scene, the, like I said, I'm using two dome lights, and the two dome lights pretty much line up. I'm just going to quickly go to my outliner. Let's quickly go to our outliner, and I'm just going to set my lower dome. We could just quickly rotate that. And that actually matches at that point. So basically, like I said, you can actually independently control both sides of your dome light. Now, there's another technique you can actually use. I'm just going to quickly hide our lower dome light and keep our top northern hemisphere. I'm going to create a polygon plane. I'm just going to scale it. Before I do that, I'm just going to quickly, quickly look at our options here, our show menu. I'm going to say show all, oh, actually not show all, that wasn't a good idea. So I'm just going to say say show polygons. I'm just going to click my light. We need to show our locators. In order, for, in order for us to show the V-ray light, we need to show locators. I'm also going to say show light. So I'm going to take our polygon and just scale it up. So basically this is our ground plane. Uh, the whole idea is to actually instead of instead of using a full spherical dome, I'm gonna be using half of the top dome and use the ground plane to actually create secondary bounce light. So basically the, the dome light lights it and the light bounces on the ground plane and actually illuminates our asset. That's another way to actually do it. Uh the good thing about the that is that you can actually project your plate onto your ground plane you can project your t a texture you can actually do some creative things by using this technique so imagine this is our uh, our our scene and we're trying to set up a ground plane but we don't want a complete HDRI instead of us recreating our HDRI from scratch we're saying just use half of the HDRI, but we're going to be creating our own different texture for the ground plane. So I'm going to quickly do a quick test. Uh, I'm just going to use our, our uh, V-Ray RT render. V-Ray RT is the uh, V-Ray interactive rendering process. You just click IPR render, and that would actually take you straight to, to RT. With RT, we can actually interact interactively see what we're doing. Uh, with our scene. Uh, I'm just going to take a moment while that loads. I'm just going to create some space here so we can see what we're doing. So this is very attain action. As you can see, uh, it pretty much comes in interactively. Whatever I do to my camera, that should also quickly update. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to actually split my... Um, I'm going to create just gonna see if I could just create a panel let me quickly go back to my perspective so basically I'm gonna go to my outliner now before I go to my outliner let's quickly go to our ground plane right now this is it we don't have a texture on it I'm gonna quickly assign a texture to our ground plane just for argument's sake it could be any kind of texture let's just create a very material I'm just going to move that out there. Let's create a V-Ray material. I'm just going to bring this out so, this, so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Created a V-Ray material, I assigned it to our ground shader. I'm just going to assign a generic material. It could be anything. Once again, whatever effect we're trying to create, you know, it, it's a matter of just pretty much just using that, using a, a different type of texture to create a certain effect. Just gonna look for quickly look for a ground texture that I that I have. Uh, let's go. Yeah, we're gonna be using this one. So the whole idea is to actually use this texture. Before I do that, I need to make sure I've got texture input gamma because we're working on linear space. So let's go back to our V-Ray renderer. Now that we've actually added some sort of texture, that actually changes the uh, the value of our the tonal value of our render. Now, let me quickly. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of real estate 
I have to like move things around a bit. So basically, that might cut that off slightly, but but never mind. You should be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna click our shader here, and I'm gonna quickly go to the color balance. What I'm trying to do is to actually show you guys the difference, and I'm gonna bring my color balance down. We get less bounds. It's difficult for you guys to see but we get less bounds from the ground because technically the light is actually the dome light is hitting the ground and it's actually casting an illumination up to our asset now i'm going to increase our color balance a bit as you can see it slightly lifts the ambient value of our asset now that obviously that's because we're using one dome and a ground plane and the ground plane is actually casting illumination it's almost like a, like like a fake gi pretty much so that's that's how you actually create a different effect let's go back to our let's quickly hide our ground plane and see what happens obviously obviously we get we don't get an illumination based on reflection on our asset but what if we bring back our other hemisphere for argument's sake just to see what 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 happens as you can see we've got a very strong lift as you can see it's lifted in so many places and that's why you can actually quickly go to that particular light and just bring down the values the more you bring down the value the more you can control what happens on the lower uh, hemisphere of our light and we're using obviously we're using a different temperature like I said, on the top hemisphere, we're using a colder temperature. And on the lower hemisphere, we're using a lot more warmer temperature. And that gives you a bit of variation as to what to get. And it's a good way to, 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 to work when you're actually lighting your scene. The more you play with the temperature of your light, the more you play with the values of your light, you can actually really get some nice, nice results. So let's go back to... Actually, let me go back to temperature and make sure we've got exactly a cooler a, a colder temperature from, from up top and at the bottom I need to make sure that we're actually doing what I'm saying so yeah so basically we've got these two variations of warm at the bottom and cooler at the top and in addition to this you know you can actually sort of add that ground plane that we had again just to add that final bit of ambient light to our scene so in retrospect we've not actually created any physical light in Vira. we've not created a rec light a directional light we've ju we're just using image based lighting to actually light our scene so everything is obviously based on an image our our hdri dome our dome was based on a hdri light our ground plane was based on an image so basically creatively you can actually light a scene just by using images whether hdris or tiffs or exis just for basic effect obviously you have to be careful when you, when you use lower resolution images you might bring noise into your scene but this gives you an idea of you know some of the ways you, alternative ways that you have to light because in future film things are a lot more accurate things are a lot more precise you've got your hdri you've got your plate you've got your your lighting information that you have to match to a particular scene so it's essential to actually get the basic techniques to actually get things going now that we've actually lit this just by using our hdri image based lighting technique now we can start adding light we can now say like what we did in the first two lessons we added a bit of a a, a bit of a accent light to the top but in the next few lessons we're actually going to be looking at adding secondary light actually in v-ray when i say custom light uh, i'm talking about the very physical sunlight and using sphere light now we're going to be using the very physical sunlight as a directional light it should not be confused with the uh, v-ray uh, sun and sky system we're just using this as a directional light as a source of as a key light in our scene um, one of the things we also notice is that uh, we're, we're also going to be focusing on this to actually also create accent lights using our various sphere lights 
basically these slides are actually unmotivated they could be anywhere in the scene and they don't have to actually make sense it's just a way to just give a bit of volume and shape to your character so first and first firstly we're going to be looking at our very physical sun uh, to create a very physical sun just quickly go to the render globals and under V-Ray uh, V-Ray physical sun and sky and just create V-Ray uh, create sun and that will actually create your V-Ray physical sun I'm just gonna quickly disable all the lights in our scene so that we can actually see the effect of what we're creating one of the things I always do again as, as well is to actually turn off uh, default light by default, if there's no lights in your scene, uh, Vira or Vira would actually try to create a default light to light your scene because it's a, oh my god, there's no light in your scene. Okay, here's some light, but I always turn that off. So let's quickly go to our render view and just do a quick render. Uh, basically, the settings for my uh, uh, physical sun, I just right now I've set it to 0.040 because my character is not in real world scale, so hence I have to use some arbitrary intensity value to actually uh, to light the scene if this character was in real world scale I will actually just need to leave this as one so you, you're gonna be getting this yellow tint and that's obviously a thing that V-Ray one day they will actually be able to fix it so, you, so you, you can actually use a white tint instead of using a colored yellow tint although this is physical, physically accurate but it doesn't make sense if you just want white value so enough of that let's focus on focusing on lighting our scene so right now I've got my direction I light here I like to start with my key light that's one of the things in future film you start with a very strong key light and shape your light as you go along so I'm just gonna do a quick render and see how this is looking so this is our key light as you can see we've got a very very strong directional feel to this particular light setup uh, the, the areas that are dark are actually going into zero uh, there's no fill light. There's no accent light. There's no like pools of light to actually what help us shape our character. But the most important thing that we need to take away from this is is that in feature film, like any other type of you know medium, whether it's television or game, there must be a very very strong directional light. And one of the things I like about the physical sun in Vera is that it actually gives you this high contrast lighting, which is full of drama. It it just jumps at you. Now when you get this particular shape of lighting this is like the raw material you can actually now start shaping your your character by adding different pools of light or adding fill light or adding a backlight in this particular case I always like to start act with a rim light I start with a very strong directional light even if it's an overcast scene I always start with a very strong directional light and slowly start bringing the values back but also keeping a sense of directionality in the scene and that's very very important to know so now that we've actually set our directional light as you can see it's pretty straightforward uh, you can use a Maya directional light for this you can use any type of light for this but like I said it's a matter of choice whatever light you use now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually now set my my rim light now most people traditionally will set their key light and then quickly head off and set up their fill light to actually give them you know a bit of feel on the side but I find out that that gets really really distracting because you've got a very strong directional light coming from the from from a particular angle 45 degrees or from for from the front of the character and then you've got the soft light I think it becomes difficult to actually get the shape of your rim light I think it's good to get all the shapes the silhouette working very well and slowly and gradually start adding accent lights and feel light so I'm gonna quickly bring this particular light this is my my rim light and um, I'm just gonna quickly activate that this rim light is very very broad it's not as directional as our directional light but I'm just trying this this is just for effects sake to see what what we get if we actually use this this method so like I said I like to do all my all my lights the directional lights and the rim light first before I actually start looking looking to create the fill light so let's do another quick render and see how how this is looking so this is our render as you can see like I said I've always tried to get my directional light first 
then actually start shaping my rim light. I like this approach because like I said, it gives me a bit more silhouette and it gives me a lot of real estate to work with. I can now figure out areas that are actually too dark or too too harsh or too contrasty, areas that need to be softened. If I go straight ahead and start creating my fill light, I'm going to start washing off. The, the, lighting, the lighting will start looking washed up very, very quickly. But here, as you can see, we've got a good, a good directionality in terms of rim coming from the back. I call my, my rim light my backward directional light because basically you, you, you're lighting from behind the character. But it's also a very, very strong source of light. And then we've got our directional light. So the next thing we're going to do is to now create our, like in the first few tutorials, we looked at how we actually created a top light and a back light and a rim light. We're going to be using those same techniques here. So what I'm going to do now is to, now that I've actually shaped my back uh, rim light and I've got my directional light working, the next thing I'm going to do is to now create a quick, quick top light to actually shape the silhouette of the top of our character. These are the things we talked about uh, in, in, in the first few lessons. But my approach is shaping the character first, rimming the character, giving it a bit of directionality, get the silhouette out of the way, then add the softness of, as, as you add the softness as you go along. The fill light and the accent lights, all those type of soft lights will actually come in just to soften the character. By the time you add GI, you will get further for, for softening of your of, of your lighting, which is something that uh, would actually help you light the dark areas of your character. So let's quickly set up a top light and see how that looks. So here's our render. As you can see, we've got a nice top rim going on here, and it's actually giving our character a full three-dimensional look. The, the shape of our character, the shape of our silhouette is actually coming through. So, like I said, my, the principle is simple. A very strong directional light. First, get your di directionality out of the way. Secondly, add a very strong rim light from behind the character to get the backward and the forward silhouette. Last but not least, add a top rim light on the top of your character to actually give him a back top from top to bottom rim. And that's very important because like like we said in the last few chapters, it's always good to actually put a light on top of your character because in real in real life all the lights actually come from the top. So that actually defines your character. Now that we've actually defined the silhouette and the car the shape of our character, we now need to start adding fill light. Now Traditionally, when you use a three-point light setup, you add a, a secondary fill light. But we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be actually using a HDRI image-based light setup to actually help us give us some fill. And if we need extra fill light, we'll actually add to it. So in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at f adding fill or top rim light. In this particular lesson, we're going to be taking it further by actually adding our fill light. We're going to be start starting off using our dome light, HDRI light. Bear in mind that if you have a HDRI in your particular scene, normally, you know, in feature film, you start with your HDRI and add your lights as you go along. But there's, there's no rules. The rules are the ones you create. I like to set up my rim properly based obviously on what the scene information is. Obviously looking at my plate, looking at my scene, if it's a visual effect shot and match the direction of the light. Once I've actually shaped it, then I'll actually use the HDRI to give it a bit of lift and fill. So let's enable our HDRI light. I'm going to quickly go to the outliner and get my dome light. Just gonna go through all that, and this is our first dome light. And I'm just gonna do first of all, I'm gonna set the intensity to something really low. Let's start from point two, and I'm gonna do a quick render. So, this is our new render. Uh, I've actually saved the previous render from the previous lesson so that we can actually compare it. This is our render with. Uh, just our four light setup, four point light setup, our directional rim and top rim light. Now this is our render with our HDRI dome. As you can see, there's a subtle difference. There's a lift here and there's a lift here. And it actually just gives you a bit more, a bit more feel in the dark areas. What I'm going to do is I'm 
do now is I'm going to take another render, but I'm actually going to increase the value of our dome light. I'm going to set it to 0.7. And then let, I'm going to do a quick render and actually compare our renders again and see how much we can go to actually fill in the dark areas of our character. So this is our new render. Um, once again, I've actually saved this into our render view and we're going to compare our previous and our current render. This is the very first render we did without our dome light, just our straight up rim light, directional backward rim and top rim. This is the second render with a subtle increase in our dome light. We can see that it's actually filling up the dark areas. Now this is our recent render. As you can see, we're getting a lot more complex lighting. We're getting a lot more secondary reflections and secondary diffuse from our dome light. And it's actually shaping up the dark areas. I'm just going to quickly zoom in for us to see. As you can see, especially this area, it was really, really, really dark, almost going into black. Now you can see that's fully lifted. So basically, this is how I've actually created my, my fill light. Instead of creating a, a strong fill light from the side angle using the traditional three-point light system, things, like I said, tend to be too contrasty on one side and very soft on the other side and it doesn't really really look interesting uh, like I said firstly setting up all my rim lights and my directional light then actually adding my fill light which is using my dome light I think the effect of the dome light is probably, prob probably too much because I'm going to be adding GI to this particular mix I think 0 0.6 between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 is good enough to actually get to the to the really 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 dark areas that I really shadowed here. As you can see, it's actually lifting that very nicely. So setting up our GI, it's it's, it's fairly straightforward. We're going to be looking at two types of GI setup. We're going to be looking at brute force and light cache. Uh, we're going to be looking at using brute uh, brute force as our primary and light cache as our secondary uh, cache, uh, light cache as our secondary uh, GI bound. Now it's actually important to actually, you know, understand that, you know, once you start adding GI, obviously your render time will go up, but it also gives you that final last illumination where, you know, it creates a first a primary bounce and then a secondary bounce. And that actually lifts the character and lifts your lighting up. Just take it to, takes it to a different dimension. Now, adding GI, what do we do? How do we add GI? Uh, in feature film, obviously, there are different ways to do GI, different softwares, but obviously, we're using V-Ray. And if you're using V-Ray for your actual feature film setup, uh, one of the best settings that, that people, most artists tend to use is the brute force as our primary engine. The brute force render engine is actually the, probably the most accurate, but it's quite expensive. But use your primary bounce as your uh, brute force as your primary bounce and then use your secondary bounce use light cache now the, t the, the two ways again you can actually decide to bake out your light cache and actually read it from a file to actually save you time so you do the calculation once uh, number of passes depends on number of uh, number of your CPUs you have in your system uh, if you have 24 just put 24 I'm going to go my subdivisions. I'm going to go as high as start with 1633. Uh, I'd make sure you have uh, use camera path. That's very important because you can actually bake out the camera path of your GI and that will work nicely. Uh, use light class for glossy rays. Use ray trace threshold if you're using ray tracing. So these are the basic basic setups that that you know for this particular scene it's not really complex that that's that's all I'm going to be that's all I'm going to be using. Uh, so now that I've actually done that, the next thing I'm going to do is actually set my okay I've got my dan dan dynamic memory limit. Uh, the, uh, basically, the rule of thumb is that if you've, I've got a 64 gig machine, so basically I'm halving halving that so that my dynamic memory limit is 32. If you set yours too low. Uh, VRAM will actually crash and will not be able to render once it gets to that memory limit. So we've set up our GI. Uh, I'm going to set my GI subdivision to 24 and set my depth to 3, which is the default. And I think we're ready to do a quick test render. 
So this is our render. One of the things you will notice is that when you actually add GI to your particular scene, you create second, secondary and primary bounces. As the light travels, it actually hits an object, eliminates that object, bounces back and continue, continuously bouncing back and forth to actually give you indirect elimination. Now, adding a secondary bounce actually takes that bounce to a different level by continuing the process, by actually giving you another layer of elimination, which is very complicated and very interesting. Now, what we're going to be noticing here is that if you look at this particular shadow area, now, I'm going to go back to the first render we did. This is, a, this is our straight up rim light and directional light with no soft, with no fill light. We now added a bit of fill light and then we increase we increase the value of the fill light just to give us a bit more you know fit fill in the in the dark areas but look at what happened once we now add gi look at this section here this section is really really dark you actually get that yellow light it's pretty much bouncing the light off of itself and actually eliminating itself so all the areas that are really 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 dark are actually just jumping out in jumping out with, with, with light and that's what the GI do it actually re, it actually gives you that indirect illumination that that you know that that is so common in real life situation that you don't really get in most CG renders so looking at this here actually you can see that you could get some good GI bounce but the problem with it with this is that it's things start getting washed out this is where you actually need to actually now go back and actually bring down your soft light bring down the intensity of your dome light so you so that you can actually get a good contrast ratio in relation to your gi so basically this, this is the, the basic setup in, in future frame starting from your rim light your directional light your field light eventually your gi to actually give you that secondary bounce to actually give you the icing on the cake so in the next lesson we're going to be exploring a bit more uh you know finalizing our gi setup now we're actually going to start rendering our layers and actually setting up render elements uh, as you can see i've also loaded our background environment uh, i'm also going to be obviously perhaps in this lesson or the next lesson we're going to be shading our environment but for now we're going to be like focusing on getting our character out of the way so i'm just going to quickly go to our global settings and i'm going to quickly load as you can see i've actually got some some of our parameters already already waiting for us so i'm just going to enable all our passes for this particular layer obviously i'm going to be rendering our character separately from our environment so that's why i'm actually quickly setting up our character now the light setup that i have here is that i that we saw recent uh just in the previous lesson i'm going to be using the same light setup to actually you know light our scene with few exceptions there's some fixture lights that i'm actually going to activate as we go along but we're also going to be using light selects now i've got the major passes i've got my f from my diffuse map to my uh, extra textures to GI and also to my Z depth. I'm going to quickly add a couple of light selects to actually help us separate our lights so that in comp in when we get to comp the shot, we can actually affect our lights, uh, wh whatever value we want to. If we want to make certain lights a bit more orange or red or blue, we can we can actually quickly just affect the light. So I'm just going to create quite a bunch of quite quite a lot of light selects because we've got a lot a lot of lights in our scene and once i've created those light selects as you can see i'm just going to quickly go to my um windows relationship relationship editor set now if you if so, normally i have a script that actually automates this process for me but um one thing about scripting is that you know it's also it's, al it's always good to have for you to actually know how to do it manually so that if your script should fail you also know how to solve the problem yourself so i'm just going to click our lights and just keep adding as we go along i find that this is probably the most sanest way to do it without going crazy is to just create a bunch of light selects and just keep just keep adding like i said i've got i've got a script that actually automates this process 
but for the sake of argument it might be good for you guys to actually see what what's what's going on so basically all you need to do is just go 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 on and actually just assign your light select to your light so what i'm going to do now is that now that i've got to this particular stage uh this will be a good time to actually do a quick test render with all with all the environment together in place to see what's breaking and what i need to fix like i said the lighting that we have here is the same lighting i set up for my character so i'm just going to do a quick test render to actually see what we're getting so this is our render as you can see it's looking good uh, I have not actually done anything to the lighting. It's exactly the same lighting that we set up in the previous lesson. Um, obviously, our our environment needs needs some work, but this particular section of our environment looks quite interesting. I like I like the feel, so I'm going to be using the same shader here to actually apply that sh shader. So I'm going to apply be applying this shader to this particular section, and um, so like I said, this this render is looking good. So our character is our character is almost ready to actually you know to, ready to be rendered the next thing we're also going to try and do is to actually set up multi mats for our particular character here we've got a lot of pieces here and it's really really difficult to actually you know create multi mats for these sections but i think everything is actually grouped into sections as you can see if you select a piece and just up arrow you can see that that's a group and that's a group so in creating our multi mats we're actually going to actually follow that particular process now how do we create a multi mat so i'm going to quickly select that group just going to quickly uh, click one of the objects select the group and go to create v-ray object properties create single property I'm going to quickly go to my outliner and just go down to where it says object property and just name it chest piece, chest vop, V-ray object property. So basically, you actually go to every section that's got a group and just name them. You can actually select different groups. Once again, it depends on what you're trying to, what you're trying to affect. In this particular case, looking at my render, I don't need a lot of stuff to affect. Um, I'm going to be using my light selects to actually, you know, shape and color correct certain areas of my of my lighting. So, like I said, this is looking interesting. This is a very very low res render, and it looks really good. So, I think the principle actually works here. It's a case of just you know making sure everything looks looks good. So, I'm going to select the head. I'm going to create a multi mat for the head. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, V-Ray, Object Property. So we've created our Object Property for our head. I'm just going to quickly rename it to Head Vop. And so basically, I'm not going to bore you guys. You have to like actually go through the major groups and just create your multi-mats. And that would actually give you, you know, enough control uh, to actually connect the multi mat. We need to actually create very multi. We need to create a very multi mat, and I'm going to create just about two of those, maybe three of those. And I'm just going to go to my multi mat section, go to the attribute, very attribute. I'm just going to name it one, two, three. And that's going to be four, five, six. So I'm just going to go back to my very object property. So whatever value corresponds to my multi mat, that's the value I'm going to give to my very object property. So I'm going to start with my chest very object property. Just going to make, oh, actually, no, override object ID. I'm going to set that to 1, chest, I'm going to set that to 2. So that's basically the corresponding RGB value that we get from our multi -mat. So whatever that corresponds to, object ID, red, blue, and green, that would actually correspond to our 
to our multimat. So pretty much that, that that's that's it for you know setting up our character. Like I said, it's it's once you follow a certain logical process, things get really really easy. As you can see, this is this is fairly very straightforward. The next thing I'm going to do is actually go into my GI section a bit and see you know what things we can do. I'm going to increase this a bit because we're going to be going into our final rendering now. So I'm going to set that to 3500. Now I'm going to, in many cases, I would actually bake out my GI. Uh, to bake out the GI, you just set up, set a directory where you want that to be saved and click save. And I would just, that would take you to a directory and just name it and save it. And to actually read the GI cache, just go to from file and it would, you just pipe into that particular file where you saved it. And that's all you need to do. That will save you a lot of time instead of re recalculating the GI every time that you render. So the next thing we're going to be doing is obviously set our set our uh, preset here. So I'm going to be going to I'm going to start with HD quality, but um, I'm going to also be increasing that to 3840. That's two times of HD. Uh, that's two times of HD times two. So it's three eight four zero. Uh, this is just a way for me to actually get a, a higher res render. Obviously, the rendering time is really really quick. I felt I could actually go a bit higher. So we've got our object properties set up. We now need to start looking at our DMC sample. Right now. We've got our DMC sample to test, which is quite low. So I'm going to set that to 16. I'm going to leave that at 1. I'm going to set my ver my AA sample to cook variable 2.50. Go to my settings, make sure that corresponds. And I'm just going to set that to 0.9. These are, these are like quick, quick settings that actually give you results. There are different ways to do it. Normally, what? Normally, I would actually decrease my adaptive amount to something like 0.7 because I want all the subdivisions in my light in my scene to actually do the work for me. But in this particular setup, you know, I'm just going to leave our adaptive amount to nine. So, obviously, that this is what we'll, this is our character setup, and this is where we've got up to. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking.